The Life of St. Nicholas by Michael the Archimandrite Translated by Bryson Sewell Nicholas ministered the gospel of grace in perfect orthodoxy, apostolically teaching them to worship God the Father and his only born word and Son, our Lord and God Jesus Christ, and the Spirit equal in power to him, and forming an essential part of the consubstantial and divine trinity, one God known in three persons, co-eternal and undivided, whose three specific characters are not, because of the oneness of their nature, coalesced into one person, as foolish Sibelius would have it, nor is their divine and uncreated perfect divinity divided into three alien and unrelated essences because of their triple personhood, as accursed Arius would have it. Such were his thoughts, and he taught the chosen people of the Lord to cling to these doctrines in matters of theology, turning away the unholy, foolish talk of those most godless followers of Arius and Sibelius, who were at that time flooding the world like a ship, and were sending to the depth of destruction those who were unstable." From Legends of the Saints by Petrus de Natalibus, translated by Roger Pierce. It happened that St. Nicholas, now an old man, was present at the Council of Nicaea, and out of jealousy of faith, struck a certain Arian in the jaw, on account of which it is recorded that he was deprived of his mitre and pallium, on account of which he is often depicted without a mitre. From Life of St. Nicholas by Donoskinos the Monk. After the king seated himself on the throne, one hundred and fifty-nine fathers seated themselves at either side of him, both they and Arius arguing with much unease. St. Nicholas, noticing that Arius was about to quash all the archpriests and moved by divine zeal, rose up and gave him a slap that shook all his members. 